Johannesburg, the sisters and children of St. Vincent's School for the Deaf have been rehearsing their percussion band for weeks in preparation for the visit of Miss Ellen Keller, the deaf-blind American who surmounted her cruel handicaps to become world famous. The band is a triumph of patience, for none of these lovely children can hear a single note they are playing. From the blind children of South Africa, Helen Keller takes home a message in Braille bearing cordial wishes to the children of America. This desk belonged to Helen Keller. It is now in a room named in her honor at the American Foundation for the Blind in New York. I'm Patty Dugaston, and I have a special interest in Helen Keller because I played her as a child in The Miracle Worker, first in the play and then in the film. As we all know, the uncontrollable child of the miracle worker grew to be world famous, a force for bettering the lives of millions of blind and deaf-blind people all around the world. She was and is the subject of more than 400 books, thousands of articles, and many, many films. Here in the Helen Keller room of the American Foundation for the Blind, along with her desk, are many mementos of her life and work, awards, medals, letters, citations, Gifts from blind and deaf-blind people. Of special interest is this Academy Award Oscar, presented in 1955 to the best theatrical documentary film of the year, the film you're about to see, Helen Keller in Her Story. Produced by Nancy Hamilton and narrated by the late Catherine Cornell, both close friends of Miss Keller, the film is fascinating as a portrayal of the life of an extraordinary woman and as a documentary film style at its best. The film takes Miss Keller's life through 1953, though she lived until 1968. In the intervening years, she continued her work for blind and deaf-blind people, usually in conjunction with the American Foundation for the Blind, which continues that work today. Wherever and whenever there was an opportunity to champion the rights and needs of blind people, the Foundation and Miss Keller were there. She was the guiding spirit of the organization in her lifetime and continues so today. To perpetuate that spirit, the American Foundation for the Blind is reissuing this film. We hope that it will serve as a reminder that blindness, deafness, or any other handicap need not be a deterrent to a useful, busy, and happy life. Miss Keller had such a life. I'm sure that you will agree with me that this film captures and preserves the indomitable spirit of the remarkable Helen Keller. I hope that you will enjoy this film as much as I have. Thank you. When Helen is not on our public errands, she's at Arcan Ridge, the Connecticut house built for her by friends, so that she and Polly might have the security of a roof and walls of their own. Mornings at Arcan Ridge begin around five. For Helen, they begin as they end with the Bible. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Polly, meanwhile, has brought up the breakfast. Sometimes something is missing from the tray. Then it is Helen who goes downstairs to fetch it. Polly knows that it pleases Helen to wait upon her when she can. Everywhere else, except in her own familiar house, it is Helen who must be waited upon by Polly. Here, where every table, every chair, every dish in the cupboard is her intimate friend, Helen can move freely and independently.
this quiet house, Polly need not speak aloud to Helen. She usually does. It helps to drive back the silence. First concern of the day is always the weather, to know how to dress for the morning walk with her dog, Etty. Clear, but cold. She checks with her braille thermometer. She is right. In her dressing, Helen is completely independent. She knows her clothes and where to find them, even to a stray belt. Every morning, Helen goes for a walk along a thousand-foot handrail built by a loving friend to guide her. A thousand feet where she is alone and free. The walk seldom varies, but for Helen it is always full of small, unexpected events. from childhood with those with sight cannot realize that one does not need eyes to see the world. The patch of herbs that was here last summer is gone.